China and the United States commenced a trade war while Donald Trump was president. Yes, among the few presidents in the last few decades to slap taxes on factories around the world was none other than Donald Trump. The average duty on nearly all products imported from China was 10%, however it varied depending on the product. In actuality, this meant that businesses that imported goods to sell in the US but produced their goods in China would have to pay 10% import tax or tariff. Trump also put these tariffs in place because he thought China was outperforming the US in international commerce, despite the fact that this was a contentious decision. This is accurate as well. Since the 1970s, the great majority of American manufacturers producing toys, appliances, plastics, machinery, appliances, and even medications have moved to China due to the country's abundant and diligent labor pool. They gradually enhanced their offerings. Almost everything we own in our homes these days, including appliances, furniture, and even medications, is made in China. To give you an idea of the seriousness of the situation, here you will see the trade deficit that the United States has with China. That is, here you will see how much more China sells to the US than the US sells to China. As you will see, the deficit has been growing steadily since the 2000s, reaching a record high of over $400 billion. This is a figure so large that it represents almost the entire economy of Argentina. But as you will see here, since Trump imposed tariffs on China, effectively, he was able to lower the trade deficit. That is, his strategy worked. The United States was importing fewer goods from China. China was evidently incensed by this. In retaliation, the Chinese employed one of their most potent tools, manipulating the value of the dollar. That's right, as you will see in this chart, since Trump imposed the tariffs the Chinese yuan lost more than 12% in value against the dollar. The Chinese tactic was to simply weaken their currency in order to offset the 10% average tax that Trump had placed on Chinese imports into the United States. Their currency has depreciated, which lowers the cost of all their Chinese goods and increases their competitiveness. Because of this, the United States dubbed China the biggest currency manipulator in the world. The Chinese have been accused of blatantly copying their competitors, of mistreating their workers, and now they are accused of manipulating their currency in order to export and produce more. However, the most noteworthy aspect of this manipulation is that it has been ongoing for many years. Yes, one of the reasons China became the factory of the world was because they maintained their currency's low value relative to the US dollar for almost three decades. However, how are the Chinese able to manipulate their currency? How, exactly, does this function in real life? I'll describe in this video how China uses one of the most potent tools available to them to control the global economy. Have you ever pondered how a currency's value is established? In other words, have you ever pondered why the value of the dollar or the euro fluctuates so much day to day? This question has a rather complicated answer. The reason why the value of all currencies in the world fluctuates constantly is due to supply and demand. When demand for a currency increases and supply remains constant, the price of that currency will typically follow suit. However, a currency's value will decrease if demand declines and supply stays constant. I'll give you an illustration. Assume that Argentina is the world's top exporter of beef, and that one day a new disease causes the output of beef in every other nation to drastically decline, leaving Argentina as the only one able to export healthy meat. The first thing that happens is that Argentine beef becomes extremely expensive since demand increases while supply remains constant. Additionally, buyers must pay in Argentine pesos in order to purchase this meat. Since foreigners must convert their dollars for Argentine pesos in order to purchase this meat, there is a corresponding increase in demand for pesos. As a result, the value of the dollar decreases and the value of the peso increases. And that's the way things really are. All currencies have fluctuations in value, primarily as a result of supply and demand brought on by global trade. A nation's currency should increase in value the more it exports and the less it imports from other nations. And China is currently the nation that exports the most worldwide. That's right, here you will see the countries that export the most in the world. In first place is China, with exports of more than $3.6 trillion. 
This is roughly three times the size of Mexico's economy. In second place is the United States, and in third place is Germany. However, just because a country is the largest exporter in the world does not indicate that it controls global trade. In other words, a nation has a trade imbalance if it is the top exporter in the world yet its imports exceed its exports. This is the situation with the United States. Despite being a major exporter, the US has experienced a persistent trade imbalance for many years. Here you will see in this graph with which countries it has such a deficit. This deficit is terrible for its economy because it makes it dependent on imports. But now let's look at China. China has been running a surplus for decades. That is, China exports much more than it imports. In this chart you will see the size of that surplus and how it has slowly grown to its record in recent years. And China's rise as a superpower and the world's factory is partly due to this excess. Chinese factories have evolved from being low quality and making simple goods to being extremely clever and generating high quality goods. You might be thinking, though, since China is now the world's factory and exports constantly, if its currency shouldn't appreciate as well. In theory, that is how it should operate, so the answer is yes. In other words, as payments must be made in Chinese yuan, a high demand for Chinese goods also indicates a high demand for Chinese yuan. The Chinese yuan should appreciate in value relative to the dollar because there is such a high demand for it. A strengthening yuan relative to the dollar drives up the cost and decreases the appeal of Chinese goods. However, the Chinese are highly cunning and use currency manipulation to get around all of this. Yes, the Chinese have artificially depreciated their currency in order to promote exports, and the most amazing part of it all is that it's all perfectly legal. Let me clarify how it operates, though. Assume that China exports automobiles to the US. Due to the fact that the Chinese yuan is their official currency, the United States must pay the Chinese when importing them. The Americans must convert their money into Chinese yuan in order to purchase the autos. As a result, there is a decrease in demand for dollars and an increase in demand for yuan. As a result, the value of the Chinese yuan relative to the dollar should increase. If you are enjoying this video and want to be aware of new videos, subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. In the long run, this strengthening of the Chinese yuan relative to the US dollar is detrimental since it drives up the cost of Chinese exports. However, as you may be aware, the Chinese government is dictatorial and controlled by the Communist Party. This indicates that they are highly organized and capable of making long-term strategies. The Chinese yuan is pegged to the US dollar because the Chinese government does not want the value of the Chinese yuan to increase relative to the US dollar. That is to say, the Chinese yuan appreciates in value in tandem with changes in the value of the dollar, and vice versa. By doing this, they maintain the value of their currency relative to the dollar at all times, which causes the price of their items to remain constant. And here's how this has worked historically. Since the late 2000s one dollar was equivalent to about 6.8 Chinese yuan. In these two decades the yuan has appreciated or depreciated but is more or less between 6 to 7 Chinese yuan to a dollar, while currencies like the euro or the Mexican peso have had much stronger rises and falls. The Chinese government manipulates the supply and demand of the Chinese yuan by holding its export funds in other currencies, which maintains the value of the Chinese yuan relative to the US dollar at the same level. Allow me to clarify. Referring back to the Chinese auto export scenario I gave you, Americans who wish to make payments must convert their dollars into Chinese yuan. This creates a demand spike for Chinese yuan and a decrease for dollars. However, the Chinese government quickly purchases dollars after receiving payment in yuan. There is no change in the price of Chinese yuan following the sale of vehicles since they instantly increase the demand for dollars and decrease the demand for Chinese yuan by purchasing dollars. You might be wondering how the Chinese government purchases money at this point. As one might expect, China sells a significant amount of goods to the US. The Chinese government does not purchase dollars and instead keeps them in bank accounts. Of course, the Chinese government might purchase dollar-denominated stocks listed in the United States, but there are limitations. Normally, Chinese buyers are not permitted on the American stock exchange. 
However, purchasing U.S. government bonds is something the Chinese government can do. In other words, the U.S. government issues government bonds, which are an IOU, anytime it needs money to pay for any kind of expense, like a war. These bonds are exchanged on the financial markets and are available to the general public. Furthermore, because these bonds are debt, they even pay interest, which benefits the Chinese government even more because they generate revenue. In any case, because these bonds are valued in dollars, the Chinese government purchases dollar-denominated U.S. government bonds from the U.S. government whenever there is a significant demand for Chinese yuan due to exports. Because of this, the demand for dollars is artificially increased and the Chinese yuan is artificially depreciated versus the dollar. And for that reason, China has been able to provide low-cost goods and expand steadily. You might wonder if the United States owes China a significant amount of money given that China is purchasing American government bonds. Yes of course, these bonds are essentially debt and here in this chart you will see which countries the US owes money to. In number one is Japan, which is also a big exporter to the United States. But in second place is China. And that takes us full circle to the trade spat that Trump started years ago with China. The Chinese depreciated their currency in retaliation for the tariffs he placed on them. This brings me to my question, do you believe the Chinese can keep manipulating the value of the dollar, and what will happen, in your opinion, when the United States elects a new president? Tell us what you think in the comments section.